I want to talk today about Stokes settling velocity. Uh, Stokes settling velocity uh, would describe, uh, if I were to give you an example, this situation where you have, say, a foram, foraminifera, uh, that died and it sinks through the water column in the ocean down to the seafloor. How fast does it sink? Uh, or a fecal pellet, for example, how fast does that sink? Um, it's also relevant to understand how fast bubbles in the magma or bubbles in water, like in your champagne glass, rise uh, to the surface. So what we're going to do is derive this uh, Stokes settling velocity roughly through a scaling type of analysis. I'm going to start off with a um, sphere, which could be like the foram that's going to sink through the water column, or again, it could be the bubble rising through the water. Um, and it has a radius of R. So of course it has a volume of about four thirds pi R cubed, okay? And we're gonna assume that it's gonna sink at a certain velocity U. And that is the velocity that we wanna get at. Now, whenever you, uh, look at uh, scenarios like this, you essentially have to do a force balance. And the way we do force balances is uh, basically sum all the forces, that's what they do with this funny uh, symbol, that's the sum of all forces, um, and that is equal to the mass of your system times acceleration, and then some of the forces here is of course driven by the gravity forces okay the force of gravity pulling this guy down which is effectively mass times gravity um, and then there's a resistance force because there's friction you can imagine if the fluid is very viscous uh, it will sink more slowly if it's less viscous it will sink more quickly and that viscosity is some measure of the amount of frictional energy loss that you have when this, this body is moving through. So the more friction you have, the more resistance you have. So you can look at this as a frictional resistance uh, force right there. Now we're gonna consider the case in which the acceleration term A is equal to zero. This is when uh, we usually, you know, I'll talk about that later and how to derive that when the Reynolds number is equal to zero or essentially inertia is zero. This is not an accelerating system. The forces of gravity or your external force is equal to your resisting force. And so you have steady um, sinking or steady flow. Uh, and this is the case when the, the body is small um, or the viscosity say is high. So we're gonna make this equal to zero. Cross that out. And that means that the force of gravity is equal to the force of resistance. Okay. And we're going to consider that the force of gravity here, that's the buoyancy force. Okay. And the buoyancy force is really not the mass of my sphere, but the, the sort of displaced mass, uh, the amount of volume of the fluid, the surrounding fluid, that is uh, actually displaced by uh, my, my, my sphere. So that is equal to delta rho, okay? Delta rho up here is the density of my sphere minus the density of my fluid, okay? This is the sphere, and this is the fluid, okay? And then delta rho is the difference between the two. And if you multiply that by g, okay, that has units rho times g. Rho is uh, kilograms per meter cubed. G is meters per second squared. And if you multiply the density by the volume, let's say four thirds pi r cubed, 
density times the volume, you will see right here, right here, they cancel is mass. And then this quantity, Fg, has units of a mass times gravity. And that's a force, okay? Now we can look at the um, resistance force. Let's start down here. The resistance force, this is something you have to know and I'm gonna just tell you, is uh, going to scale uh, with the viscosity, that's this. Um, that's in Pascal seconds. Viscosity is the resist is a measure of the resistance in a sense uh, to motion. So you can think of like a syrup as being viscous, but water being less viscous. And to move through uh, uh, something very viscous, you got to push much harder. So it does make sense that um, the force of resistance is going to scale positively with viscosity, not inversely. If it was inverse, I would put the viscosity in the denominator, one over viscosity, okay? And it turns out it depends also on this quantity, which we call the strain rate, epsilon dot. Now the strain rate is a funny thing. It's a measure of the proportional rate at which you deform something, okay? Um, in this case, what we're deforming, where, we are, uh, where the friction is actually occurring, is not in the sphere, but in the, surround, the fluid that surrounds uh, the sphere. And so the strain rate that we want to think about, or the proportional deformation is within the fluid, and it's in a halo around the fluid that, uh, that is roughly on the order of R. So, uh, that is equal, so eta dot, the dot is essentially a time derivative, is then scaling with u over uh, r. Okay. It's an approximation. Now, I will say that eta really, what it is, is d eta dt, and eta is equal to delta l over, or l, l is a length dimension, and then if you have dt right here, right, that's how you get eta dot. Okay, now uh, one thing I forgot to put here for the force is, uh, this is Pascal seconds, um, u is meters per second and r is meters. This actually, what I've drawn here has units of stress, which is force per unit area. What I really want is the total force acting or the friction force acting on the whole sphere. So what you have to do is multiply this by the surface of area of the sphere because sphere because it's really acting on the friction is acting on the surface of the sphere. So I have to multiply. Uh, I didn't leave a lot of room here, but four pi r squared. Sorry, it's getting a bit. Uh, cluttered uh, here, okay? Now, when we put these together, this means you have delta, if you put F of G is equal to F of R, then you have delta rho G four thirds pi R cubed is equal to uh, eta, the velocity, r 4 pi r squared. Now if I rearrange all of this, cancel out terms, I should get something like this, that the sinking velocity of this sphere that is denser than the fluid, okay, is going to scale along this, rho g r squared over eta um, multiplied by some constant, one third. Now it turns out, if you were to solve this uh, explicitly, um, instead of approximating like what I just did here, then instead of the one third, you would have a two ninths. Um, two ninths would be what you really have. Uh, but that's close enough to one third. So what you want to see is that uh, your final equation here, this rough scaling, whether it makes any sense to 
eta is now in the denominator. So the bigger eta is, or the bigger the viscosity is, that's, that's this guy, uh, the slower you will sink. The bigger the density contrast, um, the faster you will sink. Um, and the more interesting thing is how it scales with R, and it scales with the size to the squared. So here, um, size matters. All things being equal, the bigger you are, the faster you sink, or the faster you float up if uh, your density is less than that of uh, the fluid. So if I were to plot um, the sinking velocity versus uh, R, radius, size of my uh, sphere, um, it would scale uh, to, uh, would be a parabola to the r squared here. So as r gets big, then you, velocity increases uh, fairly quickly. When r is very tiny, you just can't sink, no matter how dense you are. Okay, that's a very interesting phenomenon. Now we can have different types of sinking rates, this right here, or this one, this might be for a high viscosity. This one would be for a low viscosity. Um, the other interesting is we often take it for granted that gravity, G, the gravitational acceleration is constant, but let's say you're up in space and you're trying to see if um, bubbles in your champagne glass are going to rise to the surface or sink or, or or how fast will they uh, rise? Well, gravity matters. If gravity is low, um, then uh, you, you should have, I guess this would be here, right? This is low G and high G up here. So in a low gravity environment, you really can't sink. Nothing can sink, nothing can rise. The buoyancy actually term goes to zero. Okay. So if there's anything to remember from here, the most important things are U scales positively with R squared, and it does uh, U with inversely related to viscosity. And in the next uh, chapter, I will talk about uh, Reynolds number, and, uh, and we'll get finally to convection.